is 4 p.m. on November 1st, 2022. And this is the City of Iowa City work session. And the first item on our agenda is going to be the development of the fiscal year 2023 through 2028 City of Iowa City strategic plan with facilitation services provided by the East Central Iowa Council of Governments. And we're going to just jump right in there and we're going to welcome you to start this conversation. And Mayor, I'm actually going to I'm going to actually give a quick intro, just right, kind of awesome. recapping the cover memo that I have in, and then I'll tear, turn it over to Karen and Jessica from uh, EC Cog to to uh, help you through the discussion today. But uh, excited to be here. Uh, hopefully, you're excited. We started this process back in March, and we can kind of see the finish line. Uh, hopefully, here um, this builds uh, this five-year plan builds off the previous two-year plans very well in my in, in my view. Um, a lot of the same themes and and focus areas are ca carrying over. Uh, what excites me about this is. Um, I think the attention to the vision statements and, and to the values this time around are, are really impactful. I think that's going to um, really help articulate where you want to be in five years. It also helps us as staff and uh, really envision um, our role in this strategic plan too. So thank you for your efforts in those areas. Uh, you'll see that the action steps. Um, uh, I would I would categorize our, our aggressive and and aim to tackle some of our most complex challenges that we face, whether that's housing, child care, social justice, and, and more. And I, I certainly applaud you for that. Um, new to this strategic plan was the environmental scan section. We haven't really we hadn't really taken the time to do that in the previous two year plans, and I appreciated the council um, opening that opportunity for for staff to offer some thoughts and. Um, you know, one thing that we really wanted to convey was some of the, the challenging uh, uh, times ahead in terms of some financial headwinds that we expect to face with the final phase in of the property tax reform, uh, with the inflationary environment that we have. We're already feeling those pressures on our budget now. And then remember, there's always a lag between development and, and property tax um, base and so when you're coming out of those COVID years where we had slow build of our tax base uh, we're going to feel those in the same next few years that those other headwinds are, are hitting us so um, we do have uh, some some more challenging times ahead thankfully uh, we've prepared well uh, fr uh, from a financial standpoint to, to, to hit those head on um, uh, the environmental scan also identified some of the service needs that we have. And uh, if you look back at the census data from 2010 to 2020, we grew about 7,000 according to the Census Bureau. Um, I think you've heard me say before, I think that's probably an undercount, and, and I'd like to say it's probably closer to eight or nine. Um, that's the equivalent of Solon and Tiffin combined, the entire communities. Uh, so those pressures on our services are real. And because we were navigating some of the financial challenges with, uh, with the property tax reform, we really haven't done a whole lot of service expansion. We've asked our employees to, to do a little bit more uh, with the growing population, and we can't do that forever. So that's just one more thing that gets thrown into the blender here, if you will. We've got some, again, aggressive goals that you've set. Uh, we also have to be mindful of our own uh, financial structure. We don't want to lose that strong standing we've had, and then we, we're going to have to invest more in our services and in our facilities um, all that said I think it's I think it's very doable uh, it's going to require some focus it's going to require us to constantly check in on this and make sure that we're making progress on the on the specific items that we've identified and uh, your staff is anxious to, 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 to have this implemented and get to work on it um, a few final uh, comments before turning it over to EC cog to, to help you through this um, one is the world's a lot different today than it was five years ago, and we have to expect that the world five years from today will be a lot different. So at the same time I'm preaching focus, we all just have to know that we have to be adaptable too. And circumstances will change, priorities may change, um, and I, I know that uh, um, you all will be open to that 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 change, and, and your staff will be too. But. Um, we just have to expect that, especially as we move from a two-year uh, to a five-year plan. 
So I think I'll, I think I'll stop there. Um, our, our hope is that you can get through um, this uh, uh, final step uh, tonight. But of course, if you need more time, we can schedule that. Um, if, if we can remain on track, we would look to bring the final plan to you at your December 6th meeting for, for adoption. Um, so we'll see how far we get today. As a reminder, you've kind of, through your previous meetings, you've focused on these, each, each of these individual sections, and you've, you've kind of taken deep dives into these sections, you've prioritized. This is really the first time you as a group have had a chance to look at it as a whole and discuss it as a whole, how all those pieces fit together. And so um, I'll turn it over to Karen now, and she's gonna have some introductory remarks, and then I think we'll jump right into those action steps and see if there's some changes you wanna make. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm back. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I have just a few introductory remarks that I think are largely going to parallel some of what uh, what Jeff was talking about. Um, so obviously, at this point, you've seen the, this graphic before, and it's just again describing the process for uh, people that might not be familiar that we've gone through to date. And we started this process back at March. There's been a lot of feedback, both in terms from the council and staff, that's brought us to where we are here today. Um, and then this is just that slide that kind of highlights the new strategy map. As uh, Jeff had mentioned, you know, really these were themes that were present in your previous strategic plans, just been repackaged slightly um, um, to reflect some, some sort of different emphasis in different areas. And so then, of course, with this version of your strategic plan, we're really delineating that vision with respect to our impact areas and our resources uh, and values, um, specific strategies you'll be using um, in each of those areas, and then action steps, which are actually your to-do list of what you want to accomplish in the next five years. And then we are dredging out some slides that you might remember these from the, the first session that we did. And uh, these were slides that were specifically um, for, for you here at, in Iowa City as we had gone through our uh, introductory sessions with both the council and staff. And we were kind of thinking about sort of the balancing uh, that you would, you would need to be doing um, as an organization and as elected leaders as you move forward. And so you were blessed with a community that's highly engaged and full of great ideas. Um, and we saw that as, as we prioritized the 300 potential action steps that just the staff and, and council uh, had uh, brainstormed. Um, so for you, I think as you're moving forward um, beyond this plan, um, you know, you're gonna have to kind of continue to balance that um, you know, the excitement to, to really dig in and, and move full steam ahead with the, the variety of ideas and challenges before you, um, with that need to, to prioritize um, and potentially say no to some things, because saying no, we think in your case, is gonna be just as important as saying yes um, to be successful. And uh, you've, you're all really super familiar with this graphic at this time. So it's really that constant thinking about effort versus impact and what's going to help us uh, for, our, for the resources we have, both human and financial, what's gonna help us to advance that vision the most um, down the road. And as Jessica and I were talking about this a little bit, she probably doesn't even want to be associated with this at this point, but <laughs> we were, you were brainstorming like, what, what's the analogy? So forgive us, we're gonna use a little bit of a cheesy analogy, but sometimes it helps. Um, so if we're to think about a river, and you've got some different types of boats out there, and these boats are all different potential ideas, and you're trying to get downriver to, to, your, to your vision. Um, so you've got your barges, right? These, these are big things, it's slow moving, but at the end of the day, it's gonna accomplish a lot. It's gonna really move things, a lot of stuff downriver, or, or something significant downriver. And you've got your speedboats. Um, so your speedboats aren't gonna carry a lot, but they're, they're, they're those quick wins. Um, then you have your sailboats, which we love them. 
they're a little bit of a labor of love, uh, <laughs> and and they're they will get down river, but it certainly is going to take more time and energy, and may not have the same impact that the previous two had by the time you hit that finish line. And so, generally, the the more boats you're loading on this river the more it's going to slow it down for everybody. Um, uh, so that's something to think about as you move forward. I would also say that sometimes there's a barge, but maybe you're not the, you're not the right people to lead that, that barge. There's another institution that's better suited uh, to take leadership on that. And you as the city, you're, you know, you're kind of the tugboats alongside, uh, helping out where you can. So anyway. Uh, we had also talked about this idea that um, as city officials, you know, you can impact your, your community in numerous ways, but there are specific areas where really you, you are really the only ones positioned to take the lead role. And we talked about areas like public safety, land use, um, public works and infrastructure as being critical areas for you. Um, as Jeff has already kind of highlighted, um, your staff was excited about the strategic plan and committed to the, the priorities that, that you, had, you had set previously, um, but capacity is something that you'll just need to be mindful of as you're moving forward. And then again, um, the, the financial piece of it, and I know you're kind of about to head into your budget, budget uh, cycle, so you'll, you'll be uh, becoming more mindful of that as you kind of dig deeper into that. And, um, and like Jeff said, you know, a, a plan is the best roadmap based on what we know now. It will inevitably change, um, and um, adaptations will need to be made um, as you start to pair up resources with the, with the objectives that you've, you've outlined. Um, so um, to be prepared for that. So that was really it for my introductory remarks. Uh, we did forward to you the draft plan. Uh, based on the, the pre work we had done at, uh, in the previous sessions. I think that the only thing that I would really highlight is perhaps a semi-significant change. I don't know if it's really significant, but uh, from previous sessions is that we had really talked about sort of phase one, phase two um, action steps, but as we started to kind of get feedback from staff and we were noticing that they were putting year ranges in, we decided that maybe it made sense to just eliminate that. That distinction was helpful for us as we were going through the process to be able to determine what was um, more of a priority to you early in the plan. But in the final plan itself, it didn't seem like it was that useful, so we just combined the action steps into one table. And so with that, um, we can proceed through it by, by section or um, mayor, if there's a different approach you would like to take. Yeah, I want to thanks again, Karen and the ECCOG team for all of your work in helping the council and staff in our community navigate through this. Uh, I think what we might do is just um, start with council. Uh, if anyone has any questions, based on the final um, draft that we see. I have a really basic question. So you were just saying how the tables of the action steps were you know, oriented a little differently. When we were doing a lot of the prioritization, we were obviously putting the priority like most impactful on top. And these appear to be chronological. Is that right? From top to bottom? Right. is how they're represented right. here. Okay. Right. And are, I was just thinking visually, there's not any representation of, of that, like the weight we were putting on an individual thing. It's more in the uh, closer to further in the future. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So if you're talking about the grids that we had done, mm -hmm. the impact effort grids, um, we had intended that to just be a tool as sure. you were going through prioritization, um, but we didn't include that in the final report, although we certainly can no, I, w I was uh, looking at this and my husband was looking over my shoulder and he's like, oh, is that the most important thing? I'm like, no, that's the most next in line thing in terms of time. So I just wanted to make sure I was understanding that correctly. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks. Uh, this has been a good process. Uh, I've really, thanks to, to uh, all of you guys, all of staff and, and my fellow council members. Um, 
one thing I was doing as I was reading through this is I was trying to think of like what would it be like for somebody who hasn't been sitting through the process with us. So as a, this as a, a document to communicate. And one, one thing that jumped out at me, and I really love like our, the way that uh, the, the vision statements were worded, but I'm wondering if, if it wouldn't be worth a little something to say, to explain, because we all know that's our vision of what success looks like. But if you didn't have that knowledge coming in, they could be a little bit confusing, because it talks about all these things that sound really great, but somebody who maybe hasn't been watching, following along the whole time might look at it and say, well, this isn't Iowa City. And of course not, that's why it's our vision plan. But I was wondering if maybe just rhetorically, it makes sense to do something to have something, you know, to kind of make it clear to a first time reader that this is our vision of success, or this is what success looks like, or something like that. Again, just trying to, to limit confusion, um, because again, we're, we're all so close to it, we all know exactly what it, what it means. So, so that was something that, that uh, kind of just jumped out through me. Out Wait, of me are you thinking document. just even retitling, something as simple as retitling it, vision oh, of success? I'm or? open to, yeah, whatever. I mean, others might have a good idea on, on what that would look like or what that would make sense without making it like an extra, you know, like too, verb, too, too, too many words, too verbose, but something. Uh, Right. I mean, when at the beginning, when you describe the strategy map, it talks about values and um, uh, and sort of the vision is part of the values. Maybe there's a way to just add a sentence or two in there for the visions. The visions describe the you know, the ideal or however we want to say it, but basically what what Councillor I think that, was talking about. Sorry. I think that makes sense. I think something like a heading in each vision, like our vision of success, because I'm thinking we look at these things carefully, um, but I think a lot of people will skim the document. And so they might not read through all the, you know, the introduction, they'll skip right to the, with, you know, what would be the meat of the, of the document. And so that's a good like point. We can, we can do that. So what I, I might suggest, if there's not, if there's not wordsmithing that needs to be done with the values and the and the strategies, that's okay. If if you do have some word changes, this is this is the time to do it. But we did a lot of that with the last round. You might jump right into the actual action steps, mm -hmm. and so that would start if you're looking at your IP packet. It'd be page 21 of your IP or page 10 of the report would be the first set, and that's your neighborhood and housing action plan and again these are these are listed kind of chronologically on what we think we might get started with first um, we, we did try to take your tiers uh, into uh, consideration here but we want to make sure that we've captured everything here if you expected to see something that you're not seeing we can we can go back and check to make sure we didn't miss it or if there's dates that you'd really like to see something started sooner rather than later that would be helpful you provided a really good segue, actually, so I'm just going to jump in, if I may. Sure. Or do you want to, Pauline? Oh, I was just going to say on, on those lines, and maybe you'll, you'll say something similar, is that um, the item that says bolster financial support for homeless services and substitutes shift, um, staffing towards uh, shelter and service model. Uh, it says, of course, your office, uh, 25 to 28. I'd like to see that, you know, starting even 23 and then through 28, because it, it just seems like that's really uh, become an issue. We'd gotten an email recently about um, some homeless camps uh, in, in the city that people were concerned about, and I, I just think it's a big issue, and maybe make it um, more 23 to 28. But, okay, sorry. No, no, that's good. Um, my question actually had to do with, it's the one, two, three, the fourth goal, advance prior to, prioritized recommendations in the 2022 Affordable Housing Action Plan, and then work with partners to undertake significant scale affordable housing efforts. And I was just wondering if some of the, if I'm remembering some of our discussions, I thought those were two separate goals. And it's certainly fine to, if they seem to align, to condense them, but those team, in and of itself, those seem like two large tasks. And so I was wondering if it makes sense to break those up again, um, or if because they're significantly aligned as staff and as ECCOGS, you know, as you guys worked through finalizing it, um, 
if it seemed like they they fit together well um because in, in my memory it was a little bit different in yeah terms that, of that's what I, I made some was. changes there i think as we were going through the staff edits i, I put them together largely because it's going to be the same team working okay. on those um, i also stripped out uh, some you had some language said using i think uh, arpa or ARPA capital or bonding funds or something, you, you, you specified types of funds, and I didn't really think that that was critical for a report like this, because ultimately we're going to develop strategies for each of these action items. So we did take some liberties with rewording mm -hmm. these, trying to um, clean up some, some things where we can. They can be separated if you feel like they need separate attention, but it's going to be largely the same team of staff working on those, so we, we felt they went well together. I, w I was curious as to why the, the, the next one right under, um, which talks about seek out and approve residential TIF applications for infrastructure, what, why, just curious why that's assigned to the city manager's office. It um, a couple, couple reasons. Um, capacity and NDS is an, is an issue. Um, it, it's going to be really hard for, there's a lot of planning items throughout this entire um, throughout this entire report, and uh, even with um, even with what's assigned to them now, it, they're gonna they're gonna be really challenged to uh, to, to to keep things on track. Um, remember, we're we're still a growing community, and and part of their basic job is just to process building permits and applications that come in. So um, they're gonna struggle to do that. We also do most of the TIF work in our office and. Uh, with legal and finance, uh, most of that's economic development related, um, but we're familiar in the in the TILF realm. So this was just an area I thought that we could kind of take some load off of NDS and and work on that ourselves. Thanks. And maybe just for my benefit, is there a consensus around changing the dates on bolstering uh, financial support for human services and mm -hmm. shifting to the shelter as service model? Was that? I mean, we we have we have a work session coming up on that. I believe. I mean, I personally would support moving it forward, but it's sort of weird because we're about to we're about to discuss it. But it seems like the issue is definitely out there in the and and we're aware of it in the community, and it would make sense to to me to to prioritize it at this point. I can tell you the reason that I I think the reason that that I selected I, so I went through and I tried to assign dates to all these that was largely my my task. Um, we are in fiscal year 23 right now, so we're six months into fiscal year 23. Um, we're prepping for fiscal year 24 right now through the budget standpoint. Um, I see this item as having a very hefty price tag, very hefty, and n not necessarily one that you can. Um, tackle with ARPA funds, right? That's a point in time. That's a one-time expense. You're not going to find one-time dollars to solve um, the homeless challenges that we have in our community. So the really the reason I put fiscal year 25 is because I think we're going to need some time for financial planning um, and possibly talking about a different revenue source to fund it. That's that's how significant this 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 item is in my eyes, um, and and we may need to to get alignment on what this means to you versus staff. But um, I just felt it was going to be very difficult to 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 really um, get there in, in uh, certainly this year, but but next fiscal year. That doesn't mean we're not continuing to work on the issue um, as we have over and over again uh, uh, the last uh, many years. Um, but, but that's the reason behind the fiscal year 25 start. So if I'm understanding it correctly, it's really a matter of, in terms of, because this is the strategic plan, the goal of bolstering services, I mean, that's like, that's digging in, that's, as you just said, something really substantial, whereas our ongoing effort for this current year, in the next months and next year, yeah. um, are, are more like, we're going to continue to find ways to help as best we can with the revenue source yeah. that we have, but this is much bigger in scale. Uh, right? I think so, so. Is that the best way yeah. to understand I, that? I think so. so it's Maybe not like, oh, we're just going to wait. Right. It's it's definitely not. You just sit back and wait. But uh, for example, um, Tracy and I right now are reviewing the the um, proposal for the um, 
uh, eviction prevention program that, that, that we've identified through ARPA. That's going to be a million dollar plus program using one time funds. That certainly speaks to this, right? It, that's about keeping people housed and, and keep, keeping people, pre preventing people from falling into homelessness. That'll be a significant investment, presumably, that this council makes uh, when it comes to um, housing and, and um, uh, that'll happen this fiscal year, um, I, I think. Uh, and, and so that's an example of something that's going to help, that's going to continue to push forward. Um, but again, what I see in this item is more of a permanent commitment, is, is saying we are permanently going to fund this at a higher level. And I don't think we're talking, you know, tens of thousands here. I think we're in a whole different kind of stratosphere. Um, uh, so, again, that's something we need to start to explore. We'll do that at the next work session is kind of a good intro to that. Um, but it's going to be hard to come up with the resources in short order. I, I had a question on the, um, I think would be the next item here on the uh, initiating comprehensive plan update and subsequent zoning code, that, that action item. You know, we had a number of different ways in which that was expressed, I think, during the um, previous work sessions. And uh, so my, one of my questions was, um, given the language, you know, my, one of my concerns at previous work sessions was the idea of completing the form-based code for the core neighborhoods, the north side in particular. And where does that stand based on the language I'm seeing here? Yeah, so th this, this language, you know, growth areas first and then infill second was part of that prioritization process. So that's th what this articulates is that we would do a completely new comprehensive plan for the entire city, which means we, we could do a pilot program while you have a, a, a comp plan uh, change going, but typically probably, I, I would say you probably wouldn't do that in, in normal order. So if you want to do a pilot form-based code program for the core neighborhoods, that should be, in my view, that should be articulated in fiscal, you know, before this project starts. I, I think, I think that's. As a separate action item, you mean? Yeah, as a separate action item. Well, that, that would be that's then what I would propose if we weren't going to change that language. Um, you know, I, I prepared some notes on this. It's, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know if I want to read through them, but, um, you know, I have spoken to this issue numerous occasions. Um, and, you know, I've tried to look at this both, you know, in terms of the, you know, the lens of the, of the uh, strategic plan, but also just information, um, you know, that I've been gleaning, the neighborhoods have been gleaning, the core neighborhoods have been gleaning regarding, you know, the need for having some controls over development. Um, first of all, I would define, you know, this question of growth versus infill, I think is kind of an interesting way in which to frame development, because what, what I would argue is the core neighborhoods um, have never been exempt from change and redevelopment. So they have always been going through ongoing growth incrementally. You know, it's not like it's a subdivision out on the edge of town with covering 75 acres. But I would, you know, I think all of us would agree that perhaps no neighborhood in Iowa City over the history of this town has gone through more change. Um, initially relatively minor incremental change until roughly 50 years ago when um, for various reasons the you know the core neighborhoods saw what I would call radical change when the multifamilies were introduced uh, to the core neighborhoods at a fairly high density you know RM44 is quite a bit higher than say RS8 which is itself even higher than RS5 so you know, anywhere from a five time increase in density to something greater than that. One thing we've, I've learned recently is that 
you know, and, it, and it's been confirmed in many towns, and, and that is that with that growth came considerable wealth to the city of Iowa City. The, you know, the value of the lands on a per acre basis in the core of Iowa City are considerably higher than most other lower density single family neighborhoods. And you know, the, the university uh, urban planning um, program you know, did a study of that. The, the report is still in a draft form. We're trying to finish it up. But they compared the, the value per acre of the north side to two neighborhoods, Weber and Windsor Ridge. And the value per acre um, was significantly higher, more than three times uh, the value per acre than in, than in the um, Weber and Windsor Ridge neighborhoods. How that adds to the conversation in my mind is that it means that you know, the, the core neighborhoods have been a wealth generator and they will continue to be a wealth generator partly due to their location, but also just their, the way their infrastructure is laid out. They will undergo constant change. This is one of the things that you know, has been noted is that uh, that's quite unlike the way most of our residential neighborhoods are structured. They, they grow, they provide growth, and then they're kind of stuck in whatever form that initial development took place. And by, stick, by, by being stuck, their value hasn't increased in the same way the core neighborhoods have. So what I, what I would be, what I'm suggesting is that it, it is important that we, we, we complete the form-based code process. Um, we're, we're almost there, I think, at our last work session. I mentioned that I contacted uh, Tony Perez with Opticos, and he felt it was a relatively minor process to, to complete it. Six pages of text is how he described it. Uh, I've spoken with who, uh, I'm forgetting her name at the moment, but Opticos is open an office in Chicago uh, and is familiar with the work in Iowa City uh, and is interested in, in doing the work. Um, w the way I see it now, because of the, the continual pressures that we are experiencing in the core neighborhoods, we can, we can see in the, in the recent interventions by, by the state, which removed all occupancy controls, is that you know, as a city council, we, we could consider whether to promote growth that incentivizes, continues to incentivize high density occupancy for short-term residents, which arguably are not consistent with our comprehensive plan, uh, which I'm referring to there the Central District 2007 plan, and also can be inconsistent with neighborhood context. Or do we try through a form-based code to incentivize diverse affordable housing options that would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and the neighborhood context? Uh, that seems to me the form-based code would be the foundation of that, f that zoning framework that would allow us to accomplish that. Um, and as I said, we're almost there. Uh, you know, it, it, it would not be a heavy lift. The heavy lift was with the South District. That's provided in our, in our zoning code all the language we need in, in which to, to introduce a form-based code concept. What we would need to do is look at the, the actual zoning codes that would apply to the core neighborhoods as we define it. and. Um, we could build off those codes, those zoning classifications that are in the South District. So it, it seems to me, again, um, we're starting down that road. I think it, it's a road that's productive in terms of land use. And it's especially productive and critical, I would argue, in the core neighborhoods because of how they are just designed to, to experience continuous change, which is quite unlike most, most of the other residential neighborhoods in Iowa City. And hopefully we can move that wealth forward and, and in ways which will not create the issues that have, have followed in the, in the wake of some of that change. You know, much of what we've seen in the last 50 years has created some destabilization in the core neighborhoods. So if we can avoid that, 
while promoting affordable housing and moving forward in terms of our social justice initiatives, I think the form-based code plays a role in that. Can I ask a question of um, Jeff, I guess? Would this also f fall under neighborhood and development? Would they own? Yeah, I think if we went this route, I mean, I, I, I at a very high level, um, I think you have to decide if you want to take a, a neighborhood by neighborhood approach, which is largely what we've been doing, kind of updating district plans. And, you know, we did the South District neighborhood and, and we're talking about the core neighborhood. Um, we can continue to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some of the other um, items you envisioned in here or that we've at least discussed that we'd like to explore, like minimum density allowances, um, greater by right um, housing types and all zoning codes, that's really a big picture comprehensive uh, plan change. So in our, in our view, in staff's view, um, some of those bigger picture changes need, need to start at a comp plan and it would be the same staff. So if we wanna do neighborhood by neighborhood, let's decide where we wanna spend that focus. Let's put our staff on that. Um, and then when they're done, maybe we take, take the step out and we do, the, they do the, the larger comprehensive one. That's not all gonna get done in a five year period. I think with all due respect to, to um, Tony at Opticos, um, we do not feel that this is a six page um, simple process in the north side. We think it's frankly fairly complicated and um, that there's maybe some things that Opticos isn't um, um, considering when, when providing you that commentary. Um, so we, we would see it's a much more um, detailed effort to, to go through uh, and do a, a core neighborhood form based code pilot. but. Um, you know, that's something that we could explore. If the council wants us to work with Opticos again, we could explore that with them or another consultant. I have a question relating to uh, where it says Brawley incorporate form-based code principles. Um, it's basically a shift to enti our entire code to form-based code. Okay. That, that's, that's what m many cities will take that approach as opposed to what we've done neighborhood by neighborhood so far with riverfront crossings could argue with Peninsula, Riverfront Crossings, and, and South District, they're just gonna put form-based code principles throughout their entire code. So your, your, your zoning categories apply across the board. Um, that's what that would mean. So is the, the intent is by 2028, the entire city would have, I'll just use the term form-based code. E, that would be the intent. Okay, um, sure. Even that's pretty bold. To go through a comp plan amendment is, is maybe a couple of years, and then you're going through zoning code changes too. And when you're basically rewriting your entire zoning code, that's, a, that's definitely a multi-year process, but within the realm of possibility over five years. Yeah. Um, I guess to the question that, um, that has been presented, do we go to kind of the north side and and use them, I would say, as a kind of as a pilot, <laughs> although we already have, you know, some form-based codes out there. I'm not opposed to it, except I do have, I, your analogy, I got a little lost. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you were not suggesting that because they pay three times higher per acre that they are deserving. <laughs> of the city's investment. It, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's what you were. Well, what I was, what I was trying to, to draw attention to is, is that the core neighborhoods um, are a wealth generating portion of Iowa City. Uh, you know, they, particularly when you consider it in terms, in, relative to other single family post-World War II neighborhoods. Um, and that generally isn't understood. You know, most people look at the core neighborhoods, you know, you drive through the core neighborhoods and you would tend to look at them and say, this isn't a thriving neighborhood. You know, there's some, some issues here. Whereas if you were to go to Windsor Ridge, you know, that's, that's a nice neighborhood. That's, this is a thriving neighborhood. The issue that I, I was trying to draw attention to okay. is that the, who, who is benefiting from these two different approaches that, that many cities have taken with regard to land value in their city? 
and that um, you know where you have that higher density, the wealth is generated typically. Uh, it may not be what people prefer in terms of you know uh, the way in which they would like to to reside. Um, you know, there's clearly a desire to on money people's part to live at lower densities, the RS5 densities that you see in Windsor Ridge, say. Uh, the, the question is, you know, when you, is when you start looking at the land values that they generate. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that I would <laughs> throw that analogy uh, in this circumstance. Well, it, yeah, it's not really an um, analogy, it's just a, or, an or, acknowledgement of the differences in land costs or land values. I, I, I get that. Oh. I don't mean it. Can I jump in, Mayor? I, I'd like to just kind of maybe bring us back to the strategic plan and the question on the table as I understand it, which is, do we want to take a more, you know, sooner but limited approach for the core neighborhoods or specifically the north side on the form-based code, or do we want the overall comprehensive plan redo with form-based code in that? I prefer the latter, and I think we've already discussed that as a group, and that's why this item is in here and the other was not. So I, I to put on my lawyer hat, we're relitigating this, and I, I don't want to, you know, we can, we can until it's done, right? But I, I, think, I think we've had that conversation, and I stay with where we landed previously. I appreciate what you're saying, John, as a policymaker. I totally understand the core neighborhoods generate all this wealth. I remember in 2018, the heat map that the downtown district put out that showed the whole community that was like tax generation with these big spikes in the core neighborhoods and like, you know, right. piddling out towards the edges. So I think we do think about that and it does matter. Um, but it, it's, I think we should have a, a plan for an overall redo rather than the spots that we've been undertaking. If I could just quickly respond to that. Um, you know, I, I don't disagree with the idea of a more comprehensive approach, although it may be, as I was suggesting, certain parts of Iowa City may be significantly more resistant to the change that I think, you know, to a form-based code, what, what difference will that make in certain neighborhoods in terms of their future? The form has been set in many of these neighborhoods and it may not change. But, but to your point, part of what, it, what I was trying to emphasize, aside from the wealth generation, is that the, north, the core neighborhoods, it, in effect, we could use the north side as the pilot because we understand it a little better in terms of the status of our work. Uh, you know, we are feeling, because of the changes the state legislature made, under more threat. And that's an immediate threat. That's not something two years away. We are seeing it happening right now. And so that's, that's why I would ask that we, we look at it on a, on a more, um, you know, a time frame that is more closer to the, to the present um, because of that immediate threat. And as I was also trying to emphasize, the, the core neighborhoods is a different beast than the rest of Iowa, Iowa City's residential neighborhoods. Um, but I would say the, the issue here again is from a time frame we are seeing development um, that is not consistent with the character and it's, it's, it's not furthering our goal, which I hope all of us agree, would be trying to create opportunities for affordable housing throughout Iowa City. And the foundation for that, as I said, is a form-based code. So there, there is a cer certain time urgency that I'm feeling, um, which is why I'm asking if we can you know, pursue it on a, at an earlier date. So, I, and Councilor Burgess, I appreciate you bringing up the fact that we did discuss this in great detail. Um, and, and, I mean, I, I, you know, do agree with you, John, that there is, um, there's things happening at the state, you know, that, you know, can uh, impact some of the things that we do in the future. I agree. And for the core neighborhood that could, um, not be to our advantage if we wait. I am okay with kind of, you know, keeping it all in one and not doing what was previously suggested as kind of that pilot. Um, 
because I know we, we did go through this, and I think that the council did kind of give the I, I was supportive then, I'm supportive now, but I do think the council did go through this uh, process and said no. But again, if someone wants to, you know, jump in and support and move forward, we can certainly do that at this time. I mean, I, I think that we may, if you look at the state legislature, we may <clears throat> again put ourselves at risk if we single out one neighborhood that doesn't, that's not, that, that yes, I mean, we see that it's somewhat different, but others may not. And I think there are a lot of specific interests to uh, property owners and others have interests in the north side and the core neighborhoods. I think we'd, we would potentially be under much less threat if we sort of do the whole grid at one time and saying we're not singling out one part of the city. It was, it made sense to do the South District, new area. It made sense to do riverfront crossings because it was a, it was it's like Brownfield that was re really, we were really encouraging it being um, redesigned. But I worry about, frankly, about state intervention if we sort of, if we pick and choose right now. I mean, I'm hearing that it sounds like the time is really the issue, and it's really a matter if we want, to, what I'm hearing, if we want to trade off. So if we want to uh, make the entire city wait longer, we, we would go in and do focus on one neighborhood. Um, but if we make the entire city come quicker, we'll, that neighborhood will have to wait a little bit longer. Um, and so I think that's kind of what we're, we're really at the, the core of the time. And uh, I don't know, to me, it makes sense to try and kind of do it all together. Um, I think Janice made a good point about, you know, we're up here trying to second guess what will come out of Des Moines, and that's one of our legislative challenges that we're facing, and we are, uh, it, is a, it is an interesting place to be, so. This seems to be coming up at meetings every so often, these, um, I think back historically, when John and I were on the council and things would come up, and. Uh, we'd be told uh, next time around or sometime around. And I do recall that we talked about form-based code for the North District and uh, with all appreciation, uh, Councillor Weiner, to uh, the fact that South District was a new sort of district and the rear front crossing was, a, was actually a, a new district. Uh, I, I believe I recall that we were told that uh, North District would be next, that we would be looking at a form-based code for the North District. Um, but kind of sounds like that's almost the only one remaining um, uh, besides like the Far East, which they haven't really talked about wanting a form-based code. So if you're talking, Jeff, about doing a comprehensive plan for everyone, then um, perhaps it is at that time, then we look and see who doesn't have anything, which would be the North District. And I would hope that they would kind of have a priority uh, for input on that. Yeah, the, basically the rest of the community doesn't, not just the north side, nor the core neighborhoods. Right, um, right. Absent those other areas I've talked about, we didn't. And you're right, the council has talked multiple times about doing one in the north side, about north side marketplace versus the residential areas. We've never gotten to the point where we've, we've pulled the trigger, so to speak. Um, as you may remember, the, 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 la the last shift in direction was we took the south district code and we're trying to put that over the Carson Farm area, basically that, that Southwest District, That's that was the task that our staff is currently working on now. That's going to P and Z right now and will come your way. And that's an example of, again, us just taking the South District form-based code and trying to apply it to a, a, a new area, growth area, much like this plan articulates, applying it to growth areas first. Um, and that's been over a year effort from our staff to, to, to create that. So. Um, uh, it's it, you know none of these issues are easy. How you prioritize them is fine with us. We'll we'll make it work. But uh, uh, to get to your more ambitious um, affordable housing goals when it comes to um, the, the form and and densities and things like that, you've got to start with the comp plan. So it's how quickly you want to get to that stage. One of the things that I'm coming back to and that I'm mindful of is how we began actually between you and Jeff and talking about sort of like how do we deal with the the environmental scan and, and in relation to the strategic plan and, and these lofty goals that we need to be focused, we need to be disciplined, we need to say no more than we need to, that's as, as important, and that we have to have regular assessment and reassessment. And so I liked very much what Councillor Harmson talked about where it's sort of like it's, it's, it's sort of like which slice of a larger whole, you know, do we want to put a smaller piece first 
to get it done with, with respect to the, the counselors who've been on for a long time and talking about this coming up, the North based, uh, North, the core neighborhoods uh, pilot. But I think that we've got this five year plan, which in the scope of things is actually not that much time. And if we're disciplined and we can say in five years, we've managed to get the whole city accounted for within this form based code that includes the core neighborhoods and it provides a roadmap for how the whole city can continue to grow, whether through infill, through core neighborhood, um, and our growth areas. So, um, and, and I am absolutely uh, mindful that this has come up a couple of times and there is very good argument for this. I just think that we're looking at a strategic plan and right now, I have to say, honestly, I'm more uncomfortable by saying, let's start slicing it even finer, given what we need to accomplish. N the core neighborhood will be part of this. It just won't be called out in its own. But the idea is that this will be done in five years, of which the core will be part of that. So I'm not seeing it as a loss. It's just it's not being called out as its own individual because it's smaller in scope. I think we should actually go for a comprehensive. So I, I just want to I just want to mention I, I hear what you're all saying. Um, but let's you know let's you know this idea let's not do any more specific plans in effect. Um, let's just do a comprehensive plan. Well just in the last few years we've expanded our riverfront crossing zones on the west side of the river in Miller Orchard a couple of times. Uh, now we're looking over at Carson Farm. That's a specific plan for a, a particular area. Um, we did some code changes to the near, near east side around, um, you know, just uh, east of Gilbert Street. So we have done numerous um, small scale specific plans, form based code related, all the while um, you know, the issue of the north side or what I would argue the core neighborhoods has been out there and uh, has not moved forward. So, you know, if, if, if we include it in this five year plan, great. As I said, I'm seeing um, whenever there's a sense of urgency and maybe it's over growth as opposed to um, growth, but addressing some of the, you know, the, the issues that have um, been associated with growth in the core neighborhoods. Um, you know, it's it's just a matter of of responding to those issues, and we have responded with numerous specific plans to do form based codes over the last few years. So, you know, I'm happy to see we're looking at it comprehensively, but I'm also seeing that at the same time we're cherry picking certain parts of Iowa City for form based codes. Thanks, as, as it's as it's felt needed. Mm -hmm. Thanks to everyone for having that conversation. What we'll do is, um, are there any more action items that people want to um, just bring forth at this time? Completely, over the whole. Well, any or of just them. Just this, yes. I mean, yes. this page or all? <laughs> this or all, yes, because we have more to go through. Sure. So one question that I had that might actually help sort of bring a bunch of different conversations into the mix is that I was looking at the um, champions that that column under all of the different action categories or the categories for action um, and I was wondering in a broad, broad sweeping yet specific way are there ways in which we the council and or staff sees the council as being more active in being champions. Like we own a couple of things where, and we discussed it during strategic planning that we could use sort of our position and our influence to have conversations with other, you know, regional entities, right? Um, so that's one clear cut place. But I was just thinking this is a tremendous lift for staff. It is really ambitious. Are there ways in which we can step in and effect to be champions in certain, you know, if not owners, not actually in there sort of having those execution meetings, but are there ways in which we can step up and help? Yeah, so um, you do have a couple of 
actions assigned to you. If mm -hmm. you skip ahead to mobility, we talk about Crandic and regional transit, really starting with your, your leadership and your connection with your elected peers across the county. Um, most of these other items will require council action at some point. And, and our, really ne our next step is once you finalize these action uh, items is to build um, kind of the plans that go along, the execution plans or implementation plans for each one. So what kind of budget authority is needed? Are there additional staffing that's needed? All those types of questions. Um, and then we'll come back to you. So just because you don't see your name as the champion, um, right. it doesn't mean that you won't, you won't have some, some uh, important milestone decisions to make along the way. Certainly. I just wondered if there was anything. Yeah, I think up if, front, if you see if anything else that's not listed as city council that you'd really like to have, you know, let, let me know. And there may be a role. There may be a role, particularly when it comes to shaping policies um, or priorities. Like, for example, if you wanted to take that affordable housing plan, which you know we presented to you in a quick work session and it has 30 some recommendations if you wanted to be involved in prioritizing those absolutely that would be that would be a, a wonderful role for the council to play you don't need that absent that your staff's going to prioritize um, based on what we think you would do and and bring that forward to you but if you see some of those types of things th there can absolutely be a bigger role for for council to play i just wanted to add quickly on this on this particular area that I recognize it's chronological, but I'm really happy to see the exploring legal steps to discourage or prevent bad faith and predatory property investors at the top. Yes. So navigating through more action plan items um, for mobility is on page 12. If, yep. Well, one that that uh, came to, came to uh, my attention was on the the snow removal issue, um, which is shown as a fiscal year twenty five start. Um, you know, I was I was looking at that and I was trying to compare it with some of the other items um, related to mobility. Um, so oh, further up the list, uh, install additional permanent cha uh, charging stations for vehicles, bicycles, and electronic devices. You know, and that's starting 23. Um, you know, what I would suggest is, you know, we could look at this as something where we're trying to develop what I would call a active mobility transition plan uh, that would begin sooner than fiscal year 25. So we we roll it out, so to speak, and um, get started sooner than 25. That's, you know, I'm, 25 seems like a ways out for me to, to, to at least start working on this issue because it relates to trying to promote active mobility for, as a, as a you know, distinct from the auto-oriented approach, whether it's busing, you know, the bus system, bicycling, or walking, you know, it's there. Th those are the options that it would be nice to see moving forward. Uh, at least taking steps moving forward. Um, and I guess I'm looking at fiscal year 25 as kind of a break. It's a pretty significant break in terms of that action. If I could just ask for a point of clarification, I think you, uh, Jeff, you may have mentioned this earlier, but I want to kind of make sure that I got it right. Um, if we see fiscal year 23, we're in fiscal year 23, and so that, those are ongoing current efforts that are just big and take, will take a long time or, or never really end. Um, fiscal year 24 is the, the budget that, you're, that uh, staff is working on now that we'll have before us. Starting July 1 of 23. And then fiscal year 25 would be then. That. July so it would be 1 of 24. Next, the budget that you'll be working on a year from now. Yeah. Right. So I can, can just make sure that. Yeah. And these, you know, I, I, I don't disagree, you know, um, when it comes to ordering some of these. But, for example, the, the charging stations for vehicles, bicycles, and electronic devices, we have those budgeted now. That's something we're, we are doing now. We're adding charging stations in our decks almost every year we're adding more charging stations climate action as part of the climate action and adaptation plan has resources uh, to expand 
um, uh, charging. So we're looking at solar charging devices in the community. So that's that's why that's moved up forward because resources in hand, ready to go. You know, something like the um, the snow clearing at sidewalk corners. Um, Again, we've talked about that. That's just a, it's a heavy lift financially. Um, and you're talking about people and equipment. And um, they're, they're expensive. And even on the equipment side, we're, we're running into issues where we can't get equipment, you know, uh, uh, nine to 12 months out is doing really good on this stuff. So um, that's why it's back a little bit. But if you want to move it up, we'll do our best to get started as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really, again, looking at this as we're, you know, uh, actually implementing it in its full sense, but taking the kind of steps that you're just talking about, trying to understand, you know, what what will be entailed in this sort of at the pl planning phase, so to speak, before implementation. If that makes sense. I had just a question about the fleet of electric buses. If I'm remembering right, when we first uh, obtained them. Uh, we realized that there were some routes that these couldn't take. So would the ultimate goal not necessarily be to replace the entire fleet as the others um, wear out, but to keep some non-electric buses for those, like the Iowa Avenue Bridge, for instance? Uh, yeah, I think that's the, only, that's the only obstacle uh, that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, so we'd have to keep uh, a, you know, a bus that can get under that or you know, reroute routes around that bridge um, or raise the bridge, you know. But um, uh, I think this is, a, this is an implementation plan that, you know, is probably going to be 15, 10, 15 years. Yeah. But by the time every bus comes up for replacement, we're holding on to buses now 18 to 20 years, even though the, the, the kind of the useful life, they say, is 12, 15. So it's going to take some time. So uh, maybe by then, you know, the buses will be built in, in a way that they, the electric buses might fit under the, that bridge, too. Well, that's a great plan. I know people love, love the buses. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, again, happy to see in there the, the, the separated bike path issue. I literally just read an article yesterday about this being one of the, the best investments for switching um, switching away from a carbon heavy economy that you can make right now. Mm -hmm. They've had huge successes in a variety of cities um, once they have separated paths. And I know that's a heavy lift as well. I'm just glad to see it in here. Any other item? We will move on to economy, which is on page 14. Good. Sorry, it seems like a really um, good kind of um, overlay of a lot of different strategies that are coming from different places to be able to um, create a healthy sort of economic plan. Yeah, my only suggestion, and I don't feel particularly strongly about it one way or another, is I noticed that later on in the plan, when you're talking about um, streets and infrastructure, the the possible need for lost. Um, I think that it would be. I think. I think it would be good to add that into this this section as well, particularly maybe as part of the childcare thing. But we're going to need more funds for some of these things, and 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 lost for early childhood education and, and so forth is likely going to be a a, 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 pop, a a quite a popular item if we're able to push it. But again, whatever you all want, I just wanted to, to note that I saw it later and thought it might fit here well as as well. I mean, I, I noticed that under the um, create flexible incentive, incentives to support the top goals of Iowa City's SMID districts and other commercial nodes, including attaining a desired business mix that serves the surrounding neighborhood. I, I would just add to that that, and um, I see that it's a fiscal year 25, so it's sort of, it's not, not happening anytime immediate to, um, you know, our plans, uh, including including in there the notion that it's it's a desired business mix, but what I, my observation is that 
creating public space as a part of a commercial district is a really valuable component of a successful commercial district. And, you know, we saw that, I think, uh, dramatically with uh, the Northside Marketplace recently, where closing Lynn Street suddenly was kind of a transformative move in terms of the, um, the value of that commercial district to the city and to the community. Uh, and opened up all kinds of programming and um, other opportunities for congregating. So I don't know if we need to change anything, but I, I would just simply, um, you know, as we move forward on those things to have, how can we make them more sociable as part of the discussion? I think that's a good point, um, Councilor Taylor, or T Thomas. Um, <laughs> Great things, great news is coming out of, of SMID, and I'm particularly I'm thinking of the, the Smulikov's location, and I think that's uh, intended to be very similar to what the, the atmosphere of the diversity markets were, which was a very social event. And it, it sounds to me that they're going to have the little uh, cubby holes for the different vendors, food and crafts and whatever, uh, in that location. And it'll, it'll be indoors, of course, but uh, but but very social. And, and I, I'm uh, anxious to, to see that happen. I think it sounds like a, a fantastic uh, idea. One of the things that I like is that, for what it's worth, this is where the SMIDs themselves can decide. How, mm -hmm. I mean, because that's definitely, that was what the downtown district, along with those property owners and, and you know, and guy, were able to say, this is what we want to council. And I know that there are similar plans uh, for the South District in terms of being able to make placemaking. Um, so... I love that you pointed it out. I'm wondering necessarily if it come, needs to come from the city since the SMIDs themselves are the ones who are kind of putting that money in and then they can come and advocate to us. Right. Yeah, I, as I said, I'm not necessarily make, right. suggesting but it's changes. A great, it's a great right. point. My observation is that it's a great point. Uh, neighborhood commercial districts often benefit from having yep. public open space as part of the, the land use plan. Awesome. If nothing else, we'll move on to safety and well-being on page 16. I do have a question about um, actually the first item and in terms of champions. Um, and I mean it utterly neutrally. Is the police department the right owner or champion for this item, right? Um, well, the, the council, I think, uh, appointed Mayor Teague to, to represent um, you all at, the, at these meetings. Um, I think it's probably, Mayor, you probably haven't been to a meeting yet, have you? Or they haven't had one scheduled yet. Probably waiting till after the first of the year would be my guess to, to reconvene. Um, if you'd like to list the city council on there, but when it comes time for implementation of this, um, it's it's absolutely the police department that's going to be the point here for the city. And I think that's a, a lot of how these violence intervention programs work. The police department's in close communication with the team that's on the street, the, the civilian team that's on the street, sharing information and, and helping, helping guide positive outcomes. So we can add city council, you can replace police with city council if you want, but there's really not another city department that would take a lead here. Well, I think this is one, I, I had a similar question, again, and I, I think it's one where I anticipate that we will see non-city organizations really taking the lead in this. I think, I think there are <coughs> challenges and problems with the police in terms of information sharing and some of those things you were just mentioning, Jeff, that, that can make it, um, in some cases less effective when law enforcement is centered in some of those violence interruption um, strategies. So I I think that, yeah, we had good discussion in having Mayor you appointed uh, to represent us, but I, and I think I said this at one of our, our sessions as well, I don't know about the, you know, the centrality of law enforcement in that effort overall. So I don't know if we wanna make ourselves that or some other, um, you know, who's the best liaison for people who are on the ground since fun patrol doesn't exist yet. 
Because it'd be them. <laughs> and certainly the police are active in this. I, I was just thinking about it as sort of that point person or point entity. Um, yeah. Uh, and I was thinking about it in terms of their own, um, it, albeit these have been brief conversations with Chief Liston, but you know that essentially he has acknowledged and said, yes, at the same time, we want to prevent crime. We're also here to respond to respond to it. Thank you. Um, so th I was thinking in the same way that perhaps you know different organizations would come in. That said, these are all what are the what are the city departments that are holding? So I recognize sort of it's a it's not rhetorical, but it's also like within the universe that we have, who is the best department? Um, I guess I'm okay with this for now, but I, I do think that maybe this is something to have be somewhat flexible in thinking about once the meetings have occurred, perhaps, um, you know, there's other ways in which we can envision this. You, you can add city council now. You're in the meetings. Um, this isn't something the police department is leading community-wide, but from our organization, they, they are leading. But if, with the mayor attending the future meetings, do you want to add city council as a second champion? That would be good. be good. I'd be comfortable yeah. with that. Anything else with this action plan? I guess just kind of an overall comment, not just for this public safety section, but I think this brings up a good point of, Megan, you just said, like, of who, of the universe of who we have now, right, and, like, how departments are organized. So I hope that, you know, Jeff, as you're looking at how thing, how different departments are changing and growing and how needs are changing, that some realignments in things may be, may be part of that flexibility that we talked about. All right. There were just a, a couple of typos I noticed um, under the heading uh, safety and well-being or consistency. Um, do we do we want a hyphen there? We have it in, in the actual description of the vision. It seems to me a hyphen is typically used there. And then under the last item of the actions, uh, expand neighborhood-based programs such, I think we want to say such as mobile community Social recreation resources. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Um, if I could just recap. Yes. <laughs> be sure I'm clear. <laughs> There's a lot of great discussion. I'm not sure I walked away with a lot of changes. Um, so. Uh, going back to neighborhoods and housing, there was some talk about splitting apart. Um, an item brought up by um, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Alter, and I, I wasn't clear what the consensus was, and I don't think it really matters whether we split it apart or not, but just... Should I we think I was asking for a point of clarity about, like, sort of what was the rationale, and okay. I got All right, it, so we're I'm good, good. there. <laughs> um, and then um, the, the lost as a funding source under economy, are you suggesting that perhaps we consider adding that in the resources section, like evaluating lost as a funding source? I don't know, does it need to be there? I mean, if it's already in the finance section. And I, have, I have a question about the lost and then when we get to the finance section anyway. Okay, I don't. I didn't see it in there, so I guess I, I, maybe that's me being confused. I think that's just one financial source that we'll be looking to. Okay. So I'm not sure that it needs to be I listed. Okay. All right, and, and then just adding uh, city council uh, under the uh, community violence intervention efforts. So okay. Yes. All right. Good. Okay. Thank and you. And I also had a, a, a like a editing comment on page seven uh, under climate action vision. Um, You'll see it there, but there's a couple extra spaces oh. uh, between sentences. Between, I don't remember what, one, two, three, four, five lines up, soil quality, period, <clears throat> and then there should be just, there's a couple extra spaces before every resident. You know, I think that's because it's justified. Yeah, um, it spreads sure. it out. Yeah. Not all of them are justified. Some of them are and some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, depends yeah, where the okay. photo is, I think. Mm -hmm. we'll I think it. it's we'll justified it. on the uh, yeah. 
Mm, good point. All right, we'll go check that. Thanks. So, Council, we're running a little short on time, so we're going to go to facilities, equipment, and technology, and that is on page 18. People, and that is on page 20. I did have one thought on the action plan under people, and the first one it says complete and execute the results of organization wide compensation, et cetera, et cetera. I was wondering if that might be a place to put in there, sort of because it might fit there, just a nod towards, um, let me see, I think I wrote this down, so I, um, a nod towards. Um, uh, also kind of reviewing the classification, make sure that all city workers are classified appropriately, which will come into, I mean, which, which I think dovetails probably with ideas of, you know, what work conditions and compensation are like. Yeah, that, that's, that's part of the, the, the plan. We're preparing the RFP now, so I'm pretty familiar with where we're going. It's basically a review of all job descriptions and then an internal equity analysis to make sure that any jobs that have evolved over the last decade or so that maybe haven't been captured in, in uh, formal job descriptions are then evaluated against the peers within the community and are reclassified up or down accordingly. So it's been 15 years since the city's done this. Um, it's just a healthy exercise for organizations our size to do. Um, but th that is absolutely part of it. We can make that clear here if you want, but it's certainly our intent. I mean, yeah, that, I mean I'm glad that I figured it might be, but yeah, I think yeah. adding it in is something would be a small change maybe. I, I would support that change. I don't know what others. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we would add that. Anything else? I have a suggestion or I don't know, a healthy challenge um, for council under the fourth from the bottom, strengthen volunteer engagement management and appreciation efforts. Um, I see this as a yes and. I mean, clearly, you know, city government is its own entity. And as such, um, you know, there's a lot of internal efforts towards this kind of uh, work. But I think that council could be much more active in this. Um, we've talked a lot about when we've actually gone to sort of, you know, like the, the various entities and been able to talk with staff and whatnot, how awesome and engaging and whatnot. And so it just seems like this might be a way that if we were had it more as actually this is an action item for us, that we could have it more front of mind and, and, and help with that. So my, my suggestion is simply to, I put it forward to, to ask council how they feel about it, but then to suggest that we put a slash and put city council on there too, just to be more aware and, and appreciative. I really like that idea, even if it really just means an execution, like establishing the expectation of our participation in more of these things, yep. because every, I That's completely exactly agree, is like every time we do, actually show up. That's very, I think, yeah. pretty meaningful or helpful, but. Write it down, then we're yeah. accountable. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I know we're pressed for time. I apologize, Mayor, but I can't help myself here. Um, thank you for that, uh, first of all, that, that comment. Um, one thing that um, a lot of cities do that we don't do is, is do public recognitions of our volunteers, particularly our boards and commissions, whether that's an annual kind of reception or event that brings all those folks together um, and, and just as a way, a small way to say thank you for their service. Um, it, it's, it's something that the council could lead on. Again, that just focuses on boards and commissions, but I've, I've seen that add a lot of value in communities before, but those are your appointments. It really takes your leadership to, to step in and say, yes, let's host this event and, and, and say thank you in that way. Great idea. Yep. So the question is, do we want to um, add our name or kind of go with um, what Councilor Berg has just mentioned is just, you know, ensuring that the city manager's office is aware that we want to be, um, we're open to being included, even if it's just some of us being present. I mean, I think adding our name there, even if that's what it means, would okay. be good yeah. for yeah, future. Especially if there would be something like a, like a uh, appreciation for Great. all these commissions. All right. Sound like we got a majority to add the name. Perfect. Anything else on this in this section? 
We'll go to financial, page 22. I had some uh, thoughts actually kind of going up to the strategy portion of the financial. Um, and I'm just, and, and let me preface what I'm about to say by uh, knowing that in some of the, the comments earlier that this is, could be one of, or is going to be one of our biggest challenges over the next, you know, X number of years. Um, and so m my thought heading into this, um, and, and I, I'm fine if I'm the only one, um, is that to be really clear that most things should be on the table and that we don't want to presuppose what we'll have to do. So with that preamble, I was looking at the first strategy. Um, and this is, I know this is, is not, uh, not, not something you know, that's it, comfortable to talk about, but the way it's worded right now, it, it has that maintained stable or declining property tax rates um, as sort of like a presupposed outcome of what this process is going to be. Um, I think that would be a wonderful outcome. Don't get me wrong. I think that's fantastic as a possibility. Um, and the rest of it I have no problem with. The idea of growing tax, uh, growing the tax base, diversi diversifying revenue sources and leveraging outside funding, I think that all it makes beautiful sense. Um, I'm actually one of those people that has some some real um, misgivings or some, some trepidation about lost as a, as a funding revenue because it is kind of a regressive tax. But I think even that, even though I don't like that, I think I acknowledge that that has to be something on the table that we talk about. So my thought, if anybody else agrees that that's just without trying to box us, put, paint us into a corner, I guess is what I'm, what I'm trying to avoid here. If we just kind of flip it around and I just kind of just put something, so something like this. Grow the tax base, consider alternative revenue sources and leverage outside funding to maintain core services and priorities while maintaining equitable property tax rates. Um, just as, because I think, you know, just sort of then we're not predetermining the outcome um, for ourselves in a couple of years or for future council members. And just my thought. Again, I, if, I'm, if I'm the only one, that's fine too, but I did want to kind of voice that. Could, could you repeat it? Sure. Uh, grow the tax base, consider alternative revenue sources, and leverage outside funding to maintain core services and priorities, um, or maybe, maybe um, new priorities or whatever, other priorities, uh, while maintaining equitable property tax rates. So if it works out that that's stable or declining, awesome. Like, I'm not against that. I just don't want to presuppose, you know, just kind of and again, this is obviously everything in this document we can change as circumstances allow as we need. So I don't know that it's a super critical issue, but the finance portion of this picture is going to be just, it's going to be less than fun over the coming years. So that's just my thought. Again, if I'm the only one, that's fine too. I just wanted to raise that idea. I was thinking we just strike the words or declining, but I like your version better, Sean. I have the same concern. Although this is part of the vision statement, right? These are the strategies. Strategy to reach right. This isn't the action plan. It's sort of leading right. into the action plan. Right. Which right. Is no. 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 I mean, I'm I'm on the same page as you. Looking, I was just sort of like working through the rhetorical of like, here's the vision, right? And so how we get to that? Right. Vision, yeah. Right. The how. And so that's why like I said the how. I'm 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 not a big fan of lost, but I acknowledge that you know it needs to be in the action plan is something we discuss and yeah. and have a healthy debate about. So yeah. well, and lost also totally different debate but right, or totally discussion different. but it's like it depends on what it's going for right different issue for a different day you know so yeah I, I would support the change I do think we need to be somewhat open to mm -hmm. circumstance can you email me that absolutely <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm fine with the change as well and we need to talk sure. about loss I'm not gonna do it here <laughs> yeah yep. we'll definitely <laughs> like I said there's no discussion <laughs> And All Karen, right. I'm sorry, I just said that's the how. The strategies are the what, right? I'm remembering the pyramid. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, any action items from this section? No? All right. Um, so other than that, any other comments about anything in the report so that we can maybe kind of wrap it up? I will say the alignment crosswalk, mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate it seeing... Uh, kind of the how is an how is aligning with a lot of things within our community um, better together 2030 vision I know we've been talking about that a lot uh, the racial equity and social justice and human rights 
um, and some of the other things, you know, are the climate action. So those are some of the things that I thought was really good. And, of course, Envision East Central of um, East Central Iowa. So, yeah, it, it was really good. Yeah, I really appreciated that as well as the, this whole environmental scan, basically putting everything into context mm -hmm. in different ways. And that's something we haven't done before. Yep. Under the consultant notes, and this is just something I want to put out to council for us to discuss at a different time, I very much like the idea of a decision-making framework. Mm -hmm. So that allows us, so that, to John's point, like things that come up and say we might need to change or what have you, we have something in place that helps us have kind of a, a, a strategic plan of how do we make decisions for ad adapting to change and how do we prioritize as we need to um, rather than just, you know, I woke up and I had a really good breakfast this morning, so I'm in this frame of mind. So anyway, I just, I very much like that idea and I would like to put it for perhaps a future work session or something. I think this would be. To figure it out. Yeah. How, how do, what does that look like? I think that'd be great. There's seven of us up here with seven different breakfast. ideas. Oh. <laughs> so, with seven different breakfasts. Yes. Yeah. That would be helpful. Outside of the changes that have been mentioned now, uh, what are council thoughts? Come a long way. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So good about it. A yeah. lot of gratitude and a lot of worries. I was, I have that feeling of like when you have a really hard like that weekend where we just like uh, you have to clean up the yard before fall mm -hmm. and you work really hard and you get done you're tired or whatever or, or you know you've done a lot of work but you feel good about it and I feel good about this plan. Good. So. I'm excited to hold us to it with flexibility yeah. but expect me to be looking down All right. down, down yes. the dais and saying I remember this. If it's already been litigated we're not going to do it again. <laughs> Try not to pull that one Wish out again. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you, Karen, and your team. And thank you so much for trusting us to help you with this, and definitely a collaboration between uh, East Chicago and your staff who have been just fantastic to work with. So yes. it's been a pleasure. Yeah, so on behalf of the city and the um, all of the citizens of this community or individuals within our community, we say thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. All right. We're gonna move on to clarification of agenda items. In the late packet, you'll see we do have one um, resolution. No, not proclamation. a resolution. Proclamation. proclamation. <laughs> I knew it was a word. Proclamation that we'll be doing. Just wanted to point that out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and which, which one are you doing first? The first one was really short, uh, or not agenda items, never mind, sorry. Yeah, we're just doing agenda items and then we'll get to uh, information packets, but yes. Um, I think, I just wanna point out, I don't need to do it in main, uh, oh wait a minute. Sorry, I just have to find it. Nope, never mind. I'm good, I'm gonna wait. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So let's go to, um, if there's no more items there, we'll go to information packet. I'm sorry, Mayor, I was late to jump in. Um, yes. This may be on, on your agenda for leading the meeting, but I did want to let the council know that um, we will have to defer the UI Labor Center uh, agreement one more meeting. Um, we've made some good progress, but just didn't have everything in place. So I, I I know you've heard me say this before, but I feel very good that it'll be ready for <laughs> November 15th. Um, so we'll ask for a deferral on that to your next meeting. Great. All right, we'll move on to information packet October 20th. Excuse me. Really small packet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'll make sure I have the right one. Oh, never mind. It, yep. I'll wait for the next one. All right. We'll move on to uh, October 27th information packet. There's a few things there. Uh, I would like to say uh, 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 thanks to uh, Councilor Weiner. Um, I really uh, appreciate the uh, work that went into the land acknowledgement draft resolution. Um, I didn't see anything there that, that I had a, any arguments or problems with. Um, uh, so I just just thank you for the for the work that went into that. Um, 
No, Thank you. I also wanted to mention a few things with respect to it, but. Sure. Oh, go ahead. So um, just so for everybody's information in drafting it, I drew directly from the University of Iowa's land acknowledgement, uh, the, the College of Law's land acknowledgement, and the language from the Native American Council um, here at the university. In my view, it's really long past time for us to honor the, those on whose land we live and thrive. It's an essential part of our history. Um, and I think we've learned over the past few years, at least, that we must learn from, accept, and acknowledge our past and allow it to inform our present and our future. Um, the, the, this happens also to be the first day of Native American Heritage Month. Mm. Um, and so it seemed like an auspicious time to, to consider moving something forward. And also, whatever the council decides to adopt is my personal view, view that we do, it doesn't need to be read at the beginning of every meeting. It can be easily accessible on the city website, can be linked to the agenda if the council should, should, should so choose. Um, I just thought it, we should get it on the agenda and move forward with the land acknowledgement. It's been recommended by a couple of our commissions. Um, and we also just passed, had Indigenous Peoples Day, which we uh, passed as a council, or at least was done this. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. Yeah, I'd like to see this on the agenda for our approval. Second. Or, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we, need, we need three we people, need right, you know, under our current rules. Um, I did have a question, though. Do we want to have some sort of a, n not this whole statement, uh, but some sort of verbal, do we want to add that to the beginning of our meetings in some sort of a verbal way, or do we just want to have that attached? And I don't have a, I don't have a strong, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm asking, not not suggesting through, through a question, um, what way to, to um, you know, to do something like this, like a shorter version, or? I don't know what the best way is. Obviously, I, I think it would be at least the, the, the first time that we talk about it would be read, but I don't know what the council wants to do with it otherwise. I think and it's that important may, that, exists, that it exists. And that may be something for us to ruminate upon. Yeah, I, I, th I think if we can get the land acknowledgement, um, if there's any changes, I think now would be a good time to talk about any of those changes in the language. Um, and then um, how we, rec you know, how we, what we do with the document. Um, I would agree um, with what um, Councilor Weiner just stated, that it would be something that we have, I would, I would think on our website um, as a land acknowledgement, we do annually and maybe we can do it um, several times throughout the year, like even this month, something like that. Uh, where we'll be able to also give, um, if not the full version, a, a, a more mm -hmm. small, a shorter version. I think that makes sense. Any thought to language that needs to be changed? Hearing none, then we will have it on a future uh, council meeting. Probably okay to have that on the next one. Um, yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. Other items. I appreciate it seeing uh, the opposing public one measure. Uh, some literature on that. Um, the county <clears throat> uh, did something as well as the uh, the school board um, had something in the paper, and so happy that the council has <laughs> been given this some thought as well. If nothing else. We will move on to the University of Iowa student government with their updates. Welcome. Hi, Council. Uh, just a couple announcements here. First off, uh, as you know, we had homecoming last week. And it was really successful. We had events scattered throughout the week, an amazing parade, and to top it off with a Hawkeye victory during the football game. And then uh, we have a Board of Regents meeting on November 10th. 
Uh, we have some of our executives going to Council Bluffs to help communicate student ideas and connect with the Board of Regents. And then we also have a new deputy, Noah Lefevre, and uh, let, I'll have him introduce himself. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Noah Lefevre. Uh, I'm currently a second year student now, and I'm going for a BA in um, political science and then also um, a social studies education. Um, and I look forward to working with you all, so thank you. Great, welcome. Welcome. Also, uh, last thing, uh, keep an eye out for an email from Noah to hopefully set up a meeting with in the near future. Thanks. Awesome. Keaton. Keaton. Just as an FYI, we'll have to formally do it on, we can do it at the November okay. 15th, but um, I'll email you about it okay, when I, I need Sorry like a letter that. or something. Yep. Perfect. All right. Council updates on assigned boards, commissions, and committees. I actually had a really interesting meeting um, with University of Iowa Overman Center for Advanced Learning uh, in conjunction with Tippy School of Business, and it was a round table um, to connect um, business leaders, nonprofit leaders, um, government, and the University of Iowa kind of clustering around grad students. There's been a real push within academia to provide graduate students with alternate um, kind of career thinking. Um, since the education system currently in, in higher education, there's a real dearth of jobs. And so how do graduate students take the skills, the expert skills that they have, and sort of think about them more broadly in other contexts? And as we all know, one major way that that happens is through communication and networking. Um, and so this was an initial discussion among all these entities um, and university professors to think about what are the important skills that grad students have already, expert skills that they're not even thinking about, and for professors to start thinking about those skills in a more broad context um, in conversation with sort of uh, different people in the community. So this is um, the beginning of a conversation that's really looking to create a sustainable network among the different entities of um, government, nonprofit, business, and university. So I think that it's an yet another way that the university and sort of the town part of the town and gown are really trying to make some inroads in an organic way. So it was a really interesting conversation. So uh, several of us attended the ICAD annual meeting um, and that was sort of a follow on to a, a special joint meeting that was held between with ICAD and the business partnership um, to discuss the possibility of a merger of the two. That will be more discussions going on with, with both organizations, but to create some efficiencies and, 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 and be able to move some processes forward in a way that apparently mirrors what a lot of other uh, er towns, cities are doing around the country. I did have a question about pending work session items. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of order. Is that okay, Mayor? No, go right ahead. Um, are we gonna have, or when can we have a discussion about um, after November 8th? <laughs> and you know, what, what meeting at which will yes. we be able to discuss um, the presumed vacancy we'll have on our council? I'm so happy you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that was the plan. So, um, if, if a resignation is received on uh, November 9th, staff, you will have a memo in your um, November 10th packet laying out your options to move forward. Um, we, may st we may actually have an item on your agenda just in case you're able to, to make a decision um, on, on which path you want to go forward. So we're working with the county to lay out those options, and that will come from Kelly, Eric, and I. Okay. Right. For the 15th, sounds like? For the 15th, yes. Thank you. So your November 10th information packet will have some background, and then I think we still need to figure out if, if there needs to be a uh, agenda item as well. Right. Any other item? I did want to say thank you to Mayor Pro Tem for leading us, or the, leading the council in the last 
a work session and formal meeting. I did watch it <laughs> just last night, just last night. Just <laughs> last, I needed to make sure that I wasn't going to be surprised by anything today. But um, no, you did an excellent job. And so thank you so much you. for doing your role and filling in when needed. So thank you so much. Well, congratulations I appreciate to you, Mayor. I appreciate you, everybody's Mayor. support and staff, especially for some of those moments when some logistics might have fallen through the cracks. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> I appreciate it. Great. All right. With that, we will be adjourned until 6 p.m.